Hello, I'm Dr. Sam and this is Dr. Sam's Health. Today I would like to start a new series which will be called Critical Appraisal. The reason why I want to do this is uh, very simple. All day long I come across some uh, scientific or pseudo-scientific claims all over internet and blogs and videos people are saying research shows, science says, uh, studies indicate this and this and this and that. And in many cases if you're not a researcher, you tend to believe uh, the information uh, the way it is presented to you. And at the same time, if you dive a little bit deeper, you will be able to discover that uh, the actual research study is not as conclusive uh, as uh, people are saying it is. The claims that people make are quite different from the findings of the study and the conclusions of the authors. There is a huge discrepancy between what we hear and what is actually published. As a researcher, I do have a special set of skills that allows me to review these articles in detail and to find out what are the shortcomings of the studies, what are the limitations, uh, what we can conclude from the findings and what we cannot, and what claims are true and what claims are fail to reach the level of statistical or clinical significance to be made. So today I would like to start this series with one interesting article and uh, there is a little bit of a background to this. Recently I came across a YouTube video where Dr. Greger was arguing in a heated debate with uh, a keto promoter, unknown keto promoter, I didn't know who this other gentleman was, but uh, it was a very interesting debate to listen because Dr. Greger was making some claims that were actually quite interesting to me as to a researcher and to as a physician. Specifically, in this video, he stated that there is only one diet that was proven to reverse heart disease, and that's all plant-based diet. I'll be honest, at this point I realized there must be some gaps in my knowledge. Uh, when I was studying medical school, doing my residency, I've never heard of some conclusive studies showing that the vegetarian diet can reverse heart disease, and, uh, you know, Shame on my professors accordingly, and uh, shame on me for not knowing that, but as a physician I, was, I became very, very curious about this kind of study. Because if there is such an effect of a vegetarian diet, we should definitely recommend it to everyone, right? So I was very curious to read about that. Luckily for me, this YouTube video had a screenshot of the PubMed page of this study. It was the study of uh, Dean Ornish, published in The Lancet in 1990. Uh, and uh, today I would like to start reviewing it, and I'm saying I would like to start reviewing it because it looks like it will be a pretty uh, extensive video, and quite honestly I don't have much time today. So what I would like to do is I would like to split uh, this video into two parts. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that we effectively have two questions. One is a critical appraisal of the actual study. And the second question is whether the statement or the claim of Dr. Greger that he made in this video is actually substantiated by the conclusions from the, from the study. And uh, we have enough information in the abstract, which is in the public domain. You can all check it on your own and compare your conclusions with mine. We can look at the abstract, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Uh, and we'll see if there are any flaws or shortcomings in this research. We'll see what authors conclude, how they have designed the study, and if their conclusions are matching what Dr. Greger said in this video. A little bit of a disclaimer. I am saying Dr. Greger quite frequently. Uh, I don't have anything against Dr. Greger. I know that he is a pretty famous researcher and uh, promoter of vegetarian lifestyle. Uh, I have no issues with that. So today's video is not a personal attack on Dr. Greger. Uh, I've got tremendous respect to anyone who dedicates years and decades of their life to research and presents it to the public. I know how difficult it is. And the main reason why I have this YouTube channel is actually doing the same thing, is taking some research data, providing information to those people who don't have access to this, uh, spreading the word about the newest discoveries uh, in the area of like, nutrition, longevity, fitness, and trying to be the voice of reason in the world of like sensationalist claims. Another disclaimer that I have to make, there is a spectrum of uh, nutritional approaches. Some were uh, 
starting with the veganism and ended with carnivore diet. Uh, I'm somewhere not exactly in the middle of that. I'm not a big proponent of balanced diet. I'm moving towards, uh, leaning towards the low carb diets. I do have some petty issues with keto diet, but I'm actually more of a proponent of low carb eating. So my personal stance is somewhere closer to keto diet than to the vegetarian diet. So I would like to acknowledge the fact that I might be biased to a certain extent towards uh, keto dieting, but at the same time, I'm a researcher, I'm trained to question everything and to be skeptical about everything and uh, I will use only the solid evidence, statistical uh, knowledge, clinical expertise in order to interpret the data from the study. Having said that, let's dive into the abstract. From the get-go I would like to mention several things about the study which are absolutely amazing. First of all, it's an actual clinical trial randomized controlled clinical trial, at least the uh, abstract says so, and you know how much I like clinical trials. They are the gold standard for showing uh, short-term and if they last long enough long-term outcomes of different interventions. They almost completely negate a uh, number of individual variabilities, so that is the way to go and that is what we have here. The reason why I'm being so cautious about this randomized uh, part is that if we look at the numbers, we can see that uh, they have randomized 48 people into two groups. One group, 28 people received experimental treatment, 20 uh, subjects received control treatment. But for anyone who knows how to randomize people, effectively it's like tossing a coin. We've got two groups, right? So if you're to uh, tossing a coin 48 times, you would likely get a 50-50 distribution of people. 24 subjects in one group, 24 subjects in, in another. Likely it won't be exactly like that. You might end up having, say, 23 people in one group, 25 in another, maybe 22, 26 distribution. But in order to get to 20 and 28, it's actually very difficult to do so. The probability of you ending up with having like such an uneven distribution of subjects between two groups uh, is very, very low. For those of you who are interested in this kind of uh, statistical reference or probability theory reference, check out the binomial distribution statistics and uh, I will definitely make a video about that in my probability and statistics course at certain time uh, soon. Without going into further details of statistics there, my point is that though this study states to be a randomized controlled clinical trial in the abstract, the distribution of two groups are very unlikely so there might be something funny happening with the randomization part. A couple of other things about this study that are very, very good. The fact that the study was published in The Lancet, the most reputable medical journal ever, also implies that it underwent a very, very serious, rigorous review. And uh, I would expect from the journal like The Lancet to publish only the creme de la creme, the, the best of the best kind of articles, studies, that are absolutely statistically and clinically relevant. Unfortunately, I don't think that that was the case, uh, but I'll get into more detail of it when I'll be reviewing the full article in part two of this uh, video. Again, for this video, we'll be focusing on the abstract, so we already reviewed the randomization part and the beauty of the clinical trial design. The next step would be to take a look at the intervention. In his statement, Dr. Greger said that the all-plant-based diet reverses heart disease. Contrary to that, in this particular clinical trial, the experimental group received not just a diet, but a whole comprehensive intervention, which included low-fat vegetarian diet, uh, stress management technique, smoking cessation, and moderate exercise. I assume that all of you know that each factor, each part of this intervention actually is known to reduce cardiovascular morbidity or mortality. So based on this design and given the control group received treatment as usual, whatever it means, it's not clear from the abstract, uh, they did not receive any of that. Uh, it's almost impossible to separate the effects of the diet from the effects of the comprehensive intervention. So in principle, it is impossible to show in the study of this design that Specifically, the diet is reducing or reversing heart disease. 
Okay, let's take a look at the outcomes. First of all, the very definition of the outcome of this study is quite different from heart disease. Dr. Greger mentioned heart disease, and he was talking about reversal of heart disease, which is an umbrella term that involves a number of different uh, cardiovascular conditions. This particular study was focused on one specific condition, which is coronary artery disease. So again, in principle, we would not be able to substantiate the claim uh, that the specific diet reverses heart disease based on this particular study because it's focused on a specific outcome which is coronary artery disease. If we get into more detail there, we'll see that what they were measuring, they were measuring actually quite a few things, but this particular uh, study was focusing on the uh, diameter of the stenosis. And that is another important thing I would like to talk about, which is uh, whether the results of this study are statistically significant and clinically important. They have reported that in the experimental group there was a reduction of stenosis diameter from 40% to 37.8% and there was a slight increase of the stenosis diameter in the control group. It might sound that the study clearly showed that the comprehensive intervention, not the diet alone, the comprehensive intervention uh, leads to reduction of stenosis whereas absence of such intervention, uh, treatment as usual, leads to increased uh, stenosis diameter. Unfortunately, there are lots of pieces of information that are mi missing. First of all, the authors do not report statistical significance, which is clearly an important item uh, on the list, especially in the study like that, and I would expect that Lancet would demand this kind of information to be in the abstract, but okay, it's not there. Uh, they do report, though, the standard deviations for the before and after uh, stenosis diameter, and uh, that shows already that there is a little bit of a problem there. In this kind of studies, which are repeated measures design, you would expect that the authors would take a look at the difference between before and after uh, statistics in group A and compare this difference to the group B. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they have done it this particular way, but the fact that they are reporting standard deviations, pretty large ones, for the before and after statistics for each group shows that likely they use some sort of ANOVA approach rather than comparing two uh, mean differences between before and after uh, statistics, which might not be appropriate. In any case, I cannot conclude much from that. What I can state based on the abstract alone is that they do not report statistical significance, so we are not sure whether it is statistically significant or not. And in the end of the day, the magnitude of the effect is actually quite small. A reduction from 40% to 37.8% likely is comparable to the measurement error of the equipment that they used to measure the stenosis diameter to begin with. So even if it is statistically significant, and they somehow managed to show it with such a small sample size, I don't expect it to be meaningful clinically. In the end of this review of the abstract, I would like to give credit to the authors. They have done an amazing study, it is very important, it was very influential at that time, uh, and uh, unlike the statement that was made by Dr. Greger, they actually were very modest in their conclusions. And they cautiously stated that the comprehensive lifestyle change may lead to regression in severe coronary artery disease, which is a modest, cautious, scientifically grounded outcome. Let us compare it to what Dr. Greger said. His claim was that there is only one diet that was proven to reverse heart disease. Neither part of this claim is actually true. First of all, I don't know whether it was the only clinical trial showing specifically a vegetarian diet having this kind of effect on coronary artery disease or heart disease in general. There might have been quite a few other studies that prove that other dietary interventions help, and I'm pretty sure they, they exist, so that part of the claim is simply not true. The next one is the word proven. It was not proven. There was a mere suggestion from the uh, author's standpoint. Uh, the next thing, it was not the vegetarian diet, not all plant-based diet, it was a whole comprehensive lifestyle change that included the diet, smoking cessation, stress reduction, and 
moderate exercise. All of these played a role in the reversal of coronary artery disease. The next thing, the reversal on its own is quite questionable. Uh, it was very minimal in terms of the magnitude of the effect, and there was no statistical significance reported, at least in the abstract. And uh, finally, we are not talking about heart disease in general, we are talking about one specific condition, which is coronary artery disease. So, now I hope that you can see how odd these claims look to someone like myself. How people with doctor in front of their name can become some sort of an authority if they are given enough spotlight they can make this kind of claims that are not really substantiated by anything and how they can affect your life your perception of what is healthy and what is not once again i have nothing against the vegetarian diet or veganism in general or plant-based nutrition uh, i do have issues with this kind of claims i hope that you will not fall into this trap and you will do your own research and I'll do my best to actually help you to digest certain articles and in the future videos I will definitely make some sort of a tutorial on how to understand clinical research and how to draw unbiased conclusions. That's it for today. I'm going to prepare the part two which will be a detailed review of this article. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, ask them, make comments, like the video if you like it. Also check out my website, I've got my blog there, some references, some tools for your transformation. And uh, that's it for today. All the best, my friends.